Hey guys, Chuck again. I wanted to do this quick video intro because this is an old tutorial that I did maybe about a year ago uh, and it's for Moho. I may mention that it's Anime Studio in the tutorial a couple times and you'll see the name of the program, Anime Studio, but that was just before the name change. All of the information is still applicable to Moho and uh, it's, it's a rig that's similar to the After Effects morphing mouth tutorial that I did uh, recently, but it, it has a couple extra tricks up its sleeve. So it's a pretty cool rig if you use Moho. Watch the tutorial, let me know what you think, let me know if you have any other tutorial requests or any questions. Thanks guys. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this layer. This is the default vector layer that, that opens up when you start a new project. I'm gonna name it, actually I'm gonna name it Mouth Shape, okay? And we're gonna create a very simple mouth shape. It's probably a little big, but we're gonna create four points on the screen like that. And the way that you, you draw an Anime Studio is you take these points and you, you use this curvature tool, not unlike the Roto Bezier tool with the Alt key pressed down in uh, After Effects. And you can uh, make it sharp or curved corners, right? So I'm going to make a quick, simple shape just like that. And that's my mouth shape. And I'm going to select it. And... I'm going to color it kind of a dark, dark red, okay? Now I'm going to create a new vector layer, and we're going to call this, let's call this teeth, all right? And we're going to create two rows of teeth, and what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm dragging out a box, and then I'm hitting the Q key and selecting that shape, and then I'll just color it white with that swatch right there. And I'm going to do the same thing underneath. So we have a, a top row and a bottom row of teeth here. Now, uh, you can easily add points by hitting uh, the A key, which is the Add Point button. And you just click on the line wherever you want to point and add it. So let me just kind of reshape this a little here. All right, so I, I'm not going to make this perfect. This is just going to be really simple stuff. So uh, there's the top row and the bottom row of teeth, and we might as well go ahead and put a tongue in there too. So I'm gonna drag out a circle shape there. Uh, I'm gonna select it again with that Q key and then click on it and we'll make it red. And let's add a couple more points to make this look more like a tongue shape. So we'll add that crease right in the middle there, and there you go, we have a tongue. So in order to make this work, obviously the teeth are sticking outside of the mouth shape. Um, in order to make it work, we want to mask all that out, right? So in, in order to do masking uh, of that sort in Anime Studio, you want to create a group, and we'll just call this mouth, and you want to drag your layers into that group. Uh, what you do there is, from there, is you click on this little ellipsis tool and, and that's your properties for your layers. They all have different kinds of properties and you can click on the masking tab. And honestly, I get confused between these two options all the time. So a lot of times I just have to click, click uh, around them and, and figure out what works. I think it's hide all, so we're going to click that and hit apply and indeed that works. So now you see that the teeth um, are only showing up inside of that mouth shape along with the tongue. Um, what I'm going to do too, uh, just so you can see that, that you can do this, is I'm going to give that mouth shape a stroke too. And you see it's not really showing up there underneath the teeth. Uh, the reason for that, and this is why I wanted to show you, is because if you select that bottom layer and click on the ellipsis tool, you can go to masking and you can say exclude strokes and that will uh, exclude the strokes from that mask. So you can create that outline there. And real quick, I just want to say too that this is um, one of the reasons that I, I like um, Anime Studio so much is because you can get this kind of inked outline look on your characters 
Whereas when I when I tried to do that within After Effects, man, did it get complicated um, dealing with intersections and stuff like that. So this is one of the sweet spots of this program is being able to do that. And I'll show you a quick sample of another character that I recently worked on um, when I'm done here. Okay, so you have the mouth there and it's all masked off. Now, the way um, I, I like to animate these simple mouths is um, with smart bones. And smart bones allow you to morph these shapes just by manipulating a bone, okay? It's really simple to do. So we're going to create a new bone layer. And we'll just call this bone layer. Why not? And we're going to drag the mouth layer into that bone layer, okay? So when you create a character you're usually going to have a bone for the head and um, we'll just drag that out we're not actually going to use it but i'll explain to you in a minute why we did that so we're going to drag that bone out and that's for the head um, we're going to select that and we're going to create let's do four more bones so one two three Four. All right, so you got those four bones there. Because we had this selected, all four of these bones are now parented to that head bone. This isn't a big deal, but it's it's the way I like to uh, to do it. I like to have these control bones parented to something, just because that makes it easier when you want to use the uh, manipulate bones tool you can drag those bones around rather than having to hit the T key and rotate them. It's a small thing, but I find myself using the Manipulate Bones tool a lot more, so it's just easier to have them working in that way. And I just noticed something as well. These bones, because I had them selected in succession, are all parented to each other, and I want them all parented to this head bone. So I'm going to grab them and click the parenting tool and then I'm just going to click on that head bone and now they're all parented to that head bone okay now I'm going to rename these real quick and as you see what I'm naming them you, you might be able to figure out this simple rig that I, I've come up with so this first one let's call this happy sad this next one we'll call open close this one we'll call narrow wide and this last one we'll call just teeth whoops teeth okay so i have these all named and what i'm going to do is i'm going to show the label on all of them so you can see what they all do and i'm also going to adjust the constraints on them and that just makes it so you know right now you can grab that bone and you can twirl it all the way around and, and you never know where the end of the smart action is. So I'm going to give them all constraints. Select them all and we'll go to angle constraints. And I usually find that just negative 20 and 20 works fine for these purposes. So now you can see they have these lines here and you can't drag the bone past that point. Just makes it a little easier to see uh, where the control is set. Um, another thing that you're noticing is that as I drag these bones around, the mouth is moving a little bit, and that's because we have this area of influence around it, right? So there's a lot of different ways to parent or, or to, to have the bones influence your illustrations in Anime Studio, and this is kind of the default way, but we don't really want that. So we're going to grab, might as well just grab all of these bones. And we're going to take that area of influence with this tool here, and we're just going to click and drag. You can, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, so we're going to drag it all the way down so they don't have an area of influence. And now what you should see is that that bone does not affect the mouth at all. Okay, so now we're going to get into the sweet spot of Anime Studio and why I think it's such an incredible piece of software. We're going to get into smart actions. And to utilize smart actions, um, you can either go to window, I believe. Is it window? Actions. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So window, actions, or you can hit control K. 
And I'm just going to run through the process rather than a lengthy explanation of exactly how these work so you can see, because visually it's going to make a lot of sense, I think. Um, before we get into that, what I'm going to do is I want to grab the corners of this mouth. I'm just going to bring them down because that gives you a good midpoint. So when we take this bone and we drag it up, these points will come up and make the mouth look happy. Drag it all the way down, they'll go down and make it look like a frown, okay? So, in order to make this work, you want to click on the bone layer. And I usually just copy the name of the bone. And you want to hit, the, hit this button to create a new action. And just paste the name of that bone in there, okay? So, what happens is, you can affect uh, the, the, the shape of this mask over time in this timeline and that correlates to basically the angle of the bone when you're animating. So if you hit the T key you want to move that bone all the way up to the top. Alright as you do that you want to have the corners of that mouth move up so you click on the mouth shape you grab those two corners and you move them up. Now you'll see as if you drag through this that as that bone moves up the corners of the mouth move up. Pretty simple, okay? So, you double click on main line to get out of there, and then you want to create another action when the bone goes down. So all you have to do is put the name in there again, space two, because that's the second action on that bone, okay? And you want to make sure that you have the bone layer selected when you create that action, all right? So again, drag over to, I use 24 frames just because it's easy. Um, hit the T key. Drag that bone down, and on the mouth shape, you want to drag those points down, okay? Uh, that's probably far enough. And then double click on the main line to get out of it. So now you'll see, as you drag this bone up, happy, down, sad. That's the basic concept here of these smart bones. Um, so we're going to select another bone here, and we'll do open, close. Okay, and we'll create another action. I guess I didn't copy that, but I'll just type it in then. Open, close. All right. We're going to go to 24 frames. We're going to rotate open, close up, and this will be the open action. So we click on that mouth shape, and we can go, whoops, we can go up with those points, down with those points, and this isn't just relegated to this mouth shape layer. You can also adjust these layers. So let's get the teeth, and we'll bring the top teeth up and the bottom teeth down, and we'll grab that tongue and we'll bring that down too. Okay, so as that bone goes up, mouth opens, all right? Uh, so double click the main line to get out of there and we will click on the bone layer and let's see if we can copy that this time. And we will click for another action, name it number two because it's the second action. And on 24 frames, T key, rotate that bone down and now we're going to close that mouth. So let's actually start with closing the teeth. We'll bring the top teeth down just a little bit and the bottom teeth will bring way up since the uh, bottom teeth rotate from that bottom jaw. Um, and we'll bring the tongue up a little as well and now we will close that mouth. Right? Zoom in to make sure it's uh, nice and closed and that's good enough for me. All right, so double click main line to get out of there. And let's mess around a little bit. Open, closed, open, closed. All right, so that's working great. Um, we'll just burn through the rest of these real quick. So narrow wide, and we will create a new action for narrow wide, 24 frames, rotate up. We'll make this the narrow shape. And we'll drag the corners of that mouth in. And that's narrow. Double click main line. 
And we'll go back to the bone layer. We'll do another action called narrow wide two. Go to 24 frames, rotate it down, and we're gonna make this really wide, okay? Double click main line, go to the bone layer, we'll select this bone, teeth, and we will create a new action. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust the constraints on this teeth layer and make it go just one direction. So now it only goes down, not up, right? So we're gonna create a new action, call this teeth, 24 frames, and as it goes down, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close those teeth up. So this is so you can create kind of a grimace or a smile that's a, a big toothy smile that's showing the teeth and you don't see the tongue in the inside of the mouth, okay? So, this doesn't have to be pre precise for these purposes, but we'll make it pretty close here. So, that's close enough as far as I'm concerned. All right, so we wanna double click that main line and we'll take a look at this. So, the cool thing about this is that much like morph targets in a 3D program, these uh, bones are additive. So, um, for instance, we can go happy, but we can also close the mouth, right? And we can fine tune it to, to make sure that um, these, it's not showing any of the inside of the mouth if you don't want. Um, we can open the mouth, we can go happy, open, narrow, or really wide, right? We can close those teeth and do a smile like that. We can frown, narrow, teeth open, open, closed, you know, it all works together. And um, like I said, you can really get in there and fine tune this and, and do whatever you want with it. So that creates a quick morphing rig for these bones. But something important to note is that you're not just limited to what you can come up with with a combination of these bones. You can still absolutely do point style animation in your timeline. So I'm um, just going to set a keyframe on all of these points right now at 24 frames. Okay, so um, you can still get in there and create, you know, kind of lopsided shapes or, or whatever you want that you wouldn't have been able to do with uh, with combinations of those bones, right? So you can come in here and you can animate um, these points around individually. Um, you know, kind of create these lopsided things that would be otherwise hard to do with those bones. Um, and that's all keyframable. Um, it, it all works uh, perfectly. It's it's it gives you a ton of control. Um, but for when you just need quick facial animation, these bones are there.